Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the So Very Mice stamp set from Lawn Fawn. So I've stamped those images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink. I'm also going to be coloring with my Copic markers to match some pattern paper from the What's Sewing On 6x6 pad. So I'm going to tear out the piece that I'm going to use as inspiration and tuck that behind my cardstock panel. So I'm starting with my mice and for them I decided to go with E31, E33, and E35. These browns have a little bit of an orangish undertone to them so I thought that they matched the pattern paper really well. So I'm starting with that E35 and laying in my shadows on this first little mouse and then I'm going to blend that out with the E33 and I'll use the E31 for a little highlight on the tips of the ears, on the center of the face, and then on the top of the arm and the side there of the belly and leg. I always like to keep the highlight on the face, so I put my shadows down the left side of the body since this mouse is facing right and will also end up on the left side of the card. And then for the second mouse, I'm going to reverse those shadows and place them mainly down the right hand side. Now for the lower part of the body, I'm doing that a bit different because the head is tilted toward the left, but the body is straight on toward the viewer. So on the lower part of the body, I'm putting my shadows equal on both the left and the right side. And then, like I said, with the face, the highlight is going to go on the left where the light would be hitting the face there. So that's just how I do it. But of course, you can put your shadows any way you like. I'm going to move on to the embroidery hoop. And for that, I'm going to keep my E31 and E33, but I'm going to add in E33. And I'm also going to do the spools of thread with this same three color combo. So on the hoop, I'm putting the highlight in the center where it is curved toward us. And then for the embroidery thread, I just put it toward the top or the right hand side. They're both going to end up laying on their side later on. For the fabric that is in the hoop, I started with E50 and E51. I was kind of trying to match a bit of like a linen fabric. So this ended up being a little bit too soft, too creamy for me. I'm gonna blend that out with the colorless blender in the center, but then to knock back a bit of the brightness, I'm going to also add in the E40 which just has a little bit more of like a gray tone to it. So I'm just gonna go right over that on the edges and then I'll go back with the colorless blender in the center to soften that. And then I'm going to move on to R00, R01 and R02. I'm gonna color the inside of the mice's ears and their noses and give them some rosy cheeks. So I use the R02 and the R01 for the cheeks and the inner ear. And then I'm going to color in one of these spools of thread and I'm starting with the R02. And I'm just picking a couple little places to start the shadows in that are different since that thread is kind of wrapped around and um, blend it out with both of the other shades. And then I did go back in with a little extra of that R02 to deepen up the shadows. I'm also gonna color in one of the buttons with this combo, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll go back in with that darkest shade to just deepen that up a bit. Then I'm going to color the handle of the scissors and I decided to add in YR04. It blends pretty well with the R02 so I can soften it with that, but it just makes it look more like the Fiskars scissors that a lot of people have in their craft rooms. So I thought that would be a nice color combo and it's not too far off from that pattern paper since it still has the R02 and the R01 in there. So it just ties it in by having those shades. 
And then for the rest of the scissors, the blades, I'm gonna use C1, C3, and C5. And um, just add a little highlight on the inner edge with the C1 where it's open. And then I'm gonna do the same combos for the thimble, putting the shadows on the right hand side since it's tipped up toward the left where the light source would be in the center of the card. And I did a second layer of the darkest two shades, the C5 and C3, since his ear is kind of casting a shadow on that thimble. Then I'm going to switch to some greens and I'm trying to match the greens that are in the pattern paper there with the stems and leaves. So I went with G20, G21, and G24. I'm gonna do the other spool of thread and I'm also going to do another one of the buttons. I did go back in with a little extra of that G24, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the button once again. After I get that G20 blended out, I'll just go back with a little bit extra of that darkest shade to deepen the shadows and blend out with the G21. And then for the last button, I decided to go back to the E40 and E41 and it wasn't quite dark enough, so I am going to also pull in the E42, and then it could just be like a nice creamy colored button. Then I'm going to take some Peachy Keen ink, and I'm going to stamp out a partial flower right where that little mouse is embroidering on that hoop, and that I think is a really good match for this pattern paper as well. Then I'll grab a black Sakura Jelly Roll pen and I'm gonna go over the eyes of my mice to make them nice and bright and shiny. Mine is a little dry, so I do have to kind of get it started off to the side there. And you'll see that I didn't get the mouse with the embroidery hoop. His one eye I didn't get quite right. So I'm gonna show you a trick. You have to let that ink dry completely from the pen. And then you can take a Tombow Mono sand eraser and very lightly sand that pen off. You have to let it dry or it will smear and you have to be really gentle or you'll rip up the top layer of your paper. So I'm using very light pressure and just sanding that over and over until I remove all of that pen and then I can go back over that and trim all of these images out with their matching dies. Next, I wanted to use the embroidery hoop die, but I didn't want to do any stitching. I wanted to stamp a sentiment instead. So I'm die cutting a circle using the fourth largest of the stitched circle stackables. It's just double checking to make sure that that is the correct fit, and it is. So I'm gonna run that through my die cutting machine, and then I'm going to die cut just the outer part of the actual embroidery hoop out of craft cardstock. Now when I lined these two up, you could see the inner stitching detail on that white circle. So if that doesn't bother you, you can definitely use it. It is the right size. But for this card, I didn't want that to show. So instead I die cut one using just the regular circle stackables and that was more the look that I was going for for today's card. So I also die cut the little pin with the white card stock so that I can color that to match the images that I've already colored. And I'm gonna do the same for the hoop, um, or at rather this is the fabric that is inside the hoop. I'm using the same shades of E51 and then E50 on the outer edges, just like I did on the small hoop in the mouse's hands. And then to dull down that brightness, I'm going to add in some of the E40 and just make that look the same as I did on the other one. So it has almost that linen feel, especially when those darker edges get covered up by the hoop that I'm gonna add. So I'm gonna add a nice layer of that and then I'm gonna come in with my colorless blender to just soften up that center and make that smooth transition from the E40 into the plain white cardstock. I'll set that aside to dry and in the meantime, I'm gonna work on the pin and I'm going to use C5 and C3 for that. So it's gonna also match the Copic coloring that I did on the thimble 
and on the blades of the scissors for the other images. So I just did that really quickly. And then I can set that aside. And then I also wanted the hoop to have a bit more dimension. So I'm going back to the colors that I used on the one in the mouse's hands, starting with the E33. And I just put a little of that at both the top and the bottom. And then I'll go in with the E31 and I'll bring that toward the center on the sides. And then finally, I'll come in with the E30 to finish that off. And then I'm going to set this piece aside to dry as well. In the meantime, I'm going to work on my sentiment and I'm using the Magic Messages stamp set. And I'm gonna take out the one that says happy birthday because I always need birthday cards. I never seem to have enough of them. So I'm gonna stamp out happy birthday. And another reason I chose this image in particular or this sentiment is because it has those three little loopies on the side of the word happy and that look just like the little loops that I stamped on the mouse's embroidery hoop. So it almost looks like that mouse is stitching this larger hoop image. So I'm stamping that down in the Peachy Keen ink again, so everything matches really well. And I did stamp that a couple times, so it was nice and bold. And then I'm gonna pop some apricot cardstock in my Misty. And that is scored and folded to a standard A2 size card in the landscape orientation. So it's four and a quarter tall by five and a half wide. And again, I'm going to take the Peachy Keen ink and stamp out the little mouse holding the embroidering hoop up toward the viewer and the sentiment, you are so amazing. And then in the center of the hoop, I stamped a little stitched heart. Next, I'm gonna go back to my What's Sewing On pattern paper pad and choose another print to use on this card. It's going to be this one here with these little stitched, kind of like a daisy chain is what it reminds me of. Um, I'm gonna have these two be featured on my scene because I think they go so beautifully together. I'm also gonna take a piece of white cardstock and use that to cut the stitch scallop rectangle frames using the second size down. And then for the larger print, I use the large stitch rectangle stackables. And then the floral print, I just trimmed down with my paper trimmer to be the right size to go behind the frame and taped that into place with some scotch tape. So I'm gonna start adding these pieces to my card base. I'm using the glue tube, mine is almost empty. So it's a little bit tricky to get that glue out because there's not a lot left inside it, but I'm gonna do my best here to get this adhered. So I'm gonna add the frame in the center of that panel, just making sure it's nice and straight on there before I smooth it down into place. And then I will take the pieces that make up that embroidery hoop. I'm gonna add some of that glue behind the hoop and um, then I'm going to line that up over my sentiment. I wanna make sure that the little prongs that stick up are in the center where you know the sentiment is so that the sentiment doesn't look kind of off kilter. So I just took my time lining that up and then I'll add a little extra glue on the back so that I can add this little pin. I'm just gonna line that up from the back and press that down into place. So fun. I wanted to pop that up on my card to give it a bit of dimension. So I added some Scotch 3M foam tape to the back and then I'm just lining that up in the center of my card. I had it a little bit to the right at first so I just shifted that and then smoothed that down. I also added some foam tape to the back of I think all of my images, at least partially. I will be adding some more of the glue tube to the rest of them where they overlap that embroidery hoop. So first I'm gonna take this little mouse and add that over on the left hand side. I had a little piece of foam tape under that thread so I just pulled it up because it was overlapping the hoop and it would have uh, made it stick up too much. And then I'm gonna take the mouse with the thimble on his head and put him over on the right hand side. I'm gonna take the green thread and put that down. Since the embroidery hoop on the 
left hand side with the mouse takes up more space I'm adding more images over on the right hand side near the mouse with the thimble to kind of balance out that weight so I have the scissors over there I have both of the spools of thread and then I'm going to spread out the little buttons all around to just kind of make it even so I have one over on the far left I'm going to tuck one over on the almost the center of the card not quite more towards the left again because the right now is image heavy and then that final one will go over on the right hand side so of course I needed to add a little bit of glitter so I'm going to grab my favorite embellishment some stardust stickles and I'm just going to add a little bit of that to one edge of the buttons and the bottom edge of those spools of thread and that's it just a little bit but it's so pretty when it catches the light so I'm gonna pick that up so that you can see that in just a second I had a little flake of something on there that I just needed to wipe away but there you can see all of that detail and another peek at the inside I really hope you guys enjoyed this one I had so much fun playing with these brand new products this video will also be on the Lawn Fawn YouTube channel today, so if you'd like to see it again, you can watch it over there. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give the video a like. That lets me know that you're interested in more videos like this. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I invite you to do so. All of the products I used today will be listed and linked for you in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.